Xorg, Wayland, you know, display servers. Everybody knows what a display server is, right? Oh, you want me to tell you? Well, you know, a display server is the thing that shows you the stuff on the screen, right? And that does generally explain what a display server is. But let's dig a little bit deeper. When you move a window, drag a file, or see a pop-up notification, that's your display server at work. When you launch a game and your graphics card renders the output to your screen, that's also the display server. When you alt tab, change workspaces, or adjust your monitor scaling, you got it, display server. A display server is a program that manages how applications interact with your screen and input devices, coordinating what you see on the screen and how you control it, and routes user input to the appropriate application windows. The display server routes that input, your WASD or your left mouse click, to the right application and manages what gets drawn on the screen. Think of it like a college marching band. Each section, drums, horns, flutes, is a different application. The band members are doing their own thing, playing their own notes. The display server is like the conductor, making sure everyone plays at the right time, in the right place, without stepping on each other. Now that we know what a display server is and we've got our nice band conductor analogy, let's go over those two big dogs in the industry, Xorg and Wayland. Xorg is the veteran in the game. It's the modern implementation of the X11 protocol, which dates back to 1984. It was originally designed to be network transparent, so you could run an application on one machine and send it over the network and display it on another machine. It's modular, it's flexible, but it also is pretty complex. It's been around as long as Linux and became the standard for Unix-like systems and still powers many Linux desktops today. Now for Xorg to compete at the highest level, it needs a lot of help. It has compositors that draw the things on the screen. It has the window manager that controls how windows behave. It has toolkits that are libraries that other applications use to build their interfaces, buttons, menus, sliders, things like that. So there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to how Xorg works. So with that comes a lot of overlap, workarounds, and legacy code. And also with a lot of aging software comes security issues, and Xorg is not immune to those either. There can be some performance bottlenecks with things like high refresh rates, touchscreens, or GPU buffer sharing. Now you may be thinking Xorg sounds obsolete and we should get rid of it or move on. And you may be right in some cases, but not all. Xorg works on almost anything, especially older Linux machines, and there are a lot of older Linux machines out there. There are a lot of apps, drivers, and workflows that are still designed around Xorg. And it is the default for some distros still, and if it's not the default, it's still available as a backup or fallback. So don't get it confused, Xorg is still out there fighting, but there is a young gun out there coming for the throne. Wayland. Wayland came to the game in the late 2000s. That's a while ago. I was graduating high school at the time, so it's taken it some time to find its stride. It had issues with some applications not working right out of the box. When I tried to share my screen with Discord on Wayland, it just wouldn't work. And every forum that I found that mentioned this issue, the solution was just switch back to Xorg. So I did, and that fixed it. Now Discord is fairly new, but there are a lot of legacy applications out there that still depend on Xorg. So Wayland uses something called X Wayland to run those legacy X applications. Now fast forwarding to modern day, they've tweaked a lot of those workflows and flowcharts to the point where Wayland is starting to take over the throne. Gnome and KDE Plasma, both very popular front ends and both that I use, default to Wayland in a lot of major distros like Fedora and Ubuntu. Gaming support has improved dramatically as well, especially with things like Gamescope and Pipewire. Gamescope is a Wayland compositor built by Valve, originally for the Steam Deck, and Pipewire is a modern server for handling audio and video streams on Linux. Things like OBS, Zoom, and Discord all use it. And now that all those major bugs have been squashed with Wayland, it's gone from being that thing that we're looking to move to in the future and becoming the present. Now that you have all the information, which one's for you, Xorg or Wayland? I suggest using Wayland if you're using a modern GPU, if you want better security and maybe a little bit better battery life, or if you're using one of those popular front ends that I mentioned earlier, GNOME or KDE Plasma. There are some situations where you still want to use Xorg. If you're using very niche applications or workflows, like some VMs or screen sharing applications, you might want to use Xorg. They may not be supported by Wayland yet. Also, if you're using older hardware, specifically Nvidia hardware, or you need a very specific GPU driver. Your Linux distro will most likely just pick the best choice, but users can always switch between the two. And that's one of the great things about Linux. You always have a choice. Now let me know in the comments, have you switched between Xorg and Wayland? And if so, what problems have you solved and what problems have you caused? And before you head out, check out this video on how Windows games run so well on Linux. Peace.